So I'm pulling up to the home where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stayed as a student in seminary school. And that's it right there. You see with all the boards up, that's actually a piece of history that I don't think many people know about in this area. The home where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stayed as a student at Crozer Theological Seminary in the late 40s and early 50s remains one of Camden's untold legacies. Now boarded up beside an alley filled with broken glass and trash. I just have to say it was heartbreaking to see it in that state. It looks like any other boarded up home you would see in Camden. You wouldn't give it much thought if you were just driving down the street. Now I want to share this article from the Philadelphia Tribune in 1950, which mentions him as Michael King. That was his birth name, something that I just learned about. And this is part of history we often don't hear about, how Camden and South Jersey played a huge part in the civil rights movement. The article states how when Dr. King and his friends were denied service at a cafe in Maple Shade, that's what sparked the first sit-in in New Jersey. And I spoke with civil rights activist Patrick Duff, who has done extensive research on Dr. King's time in the Garden State. The restaurant owner, um, told Dr. King and his friends to leave. They refused to leave. He pulled out a gun, uh, put it to their faces, and, and uh, said, I want you out of here, and they still refused to leave. One of the complainants, one of the people with Dr. King, was actually a Philadelphia policewoman. Her name was Pearl Smith. And um, Pearl Smith, uh, you know, and, and, and Dr. King and Walter McCall and Doris Wilson decided they were going to see this thing through, even though they were being threatened. Now, to keep this history alive, Duff, along with the NAACP and the Hunt family, who actually owns the home, are on a mission to get federal recognition as a historical landmark. The property is in bad shape, and this has resulted in the owners receiving a demolition notice. The city says that's not their intention. Still, many fear this great piece of history is at stake, and the activists speak to the significance Camden, in particular, played a role and the landscape that we see today as the diverse America, which we all live in. First of all, you have Dr. King's first civil rights event that happened. Secondly, the time that he spent in this area was the time that he accepted nonviolence. This has been a battle that's been going on for over a year to get this federal recognition as a historical landmark. Just recently, Congressman Donald Norcross has put in his support. What we want to do is we want to make it into a civil rights center and a museum basically for Dr. King's time in this area to explain what happened between 1948 and 1951 in Dr. King's life um, in this area, which is, uh, which is very, very, very important in the formation of him as, as a civil rights leader. There's an organization called Preservation New Jersey puts out a top 10 list yeah, of most mm -hmm. endangered sites in New Jersey every year. And guess what? Half of them, within a year or two, get decimated. We don't do a great job protecting our history, but there's a lot of history out there to protect. We can't save it all. Yeah. And if you want to, you're going to have to dig deep in your own pocket. Am I the only one thinking they could not only salvage this, but they could charge to visit it? Like, I'm thinking you could monetize this. Absolutely. Okay, love it. Thanks, Ashley.